What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily Pandemic Update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. And we even touch on climate change in our daily videos. We talk about some current uh, weather events that are going on that, who knows, they could be a part of what's going on with our ever-changing climate. Want to stay informed with what's going on? Want to keep learning about what's going on? Subscribe down below. It's the best way to do it. And you can even be informed when I post a new video by hitting that notification bell up above. And of course, give these the thumbs up. If you like my video, share these videos with anyone you know. And of course, leave a comment down below. Today, we got a few news stories to talk about. Then we're really just going to look at a lot of various different things in data today. Air quality, pollen levels, EMS calls like we normally look at. Uh, we do have some wastewater data that updated today for Pennsylvania. We're going to take a look at a few places we did not get to over the weekend. And we're going to see some wastewater sites, once again, that are relatively concerning. And then we'll take a look at some of our daily data. So this is going to probably be maybe just over a 15-minute video today. Starting off today, a lot of people ask about what's going to happen with the booster shot come fall. Well, maybe we're learning a little bit more about that. U.S. FDA advisors to consider if new COVID shot should target JN.1. And it's sounding like reading through this and reading some other articles, they're going to go after JN.1 or the flirt, you know, such as KP.2 stuff in relations to that, because that is the current variant. And as we all know, I know it as well. You know, come fall, who knows what variant we're going to be at. Variants are rapidly evolving. It seems like each and every day I'm hearing something about a different variant that's out there that I have never heard of before. Uh, we got JN.1, which was last winter. Now there's KP.2, KP.3, and a whole other list of variants at this time. Taking a look at this, this is a uh, rather interesting. First three years of COVID-19 had 3 million. 3 million excess deaths in the West, a study says. The first three years of the COVID-19 pandemic had more than 3 million excess deaths in Western countries, a new study says, raising serious concerns. And we've known this for some time. The beginning of the pandemic, excess deaths were a lot higher. I can tell you a story about something that happened in Pennsylvania. I believe it was Johnstown, Pennsylvania. A family was found dead. This was this was several years back in the early days of the pandemic a family was found dead coroner went out to do their examination determined they died of COVID-19 yes I mean that's not the only case I'm sure there, if you google search it I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of different cases where this happened early on nowadays people don't really test for COVID so who knows are some of these mysterious deaths COVID related are they not who knows at this point in the ball game I will be adding this study to the site we don't always show full uh, stories here on videos because if we went here, read this story, read every story that I share in each and every video here on camera, you know how long that would take? Yeah, you would be, you would have to sit through at least a 30 to 40 minute video each day. All right, moving on now. Australia, bird flu outbreak detected at 3rd Golden Plains Farm. And in this case, another 80,000 birds are going to have to die. That's how they're trying to slow the spread. I did a tweet earlier about, imagine if humans were dying as fast as birds are dying right now, and a lot of animals in general. Ooh, would people start taking viruses more seriously? I don't know, but uh, something needs to be done because, I mean, it is so sad to have to see all these animals, birds, die because of illness because we fail to do anything about it to try and stop the spread of it. So many people are like, oh, 80,000 birds dying. Oh, wow. That's oh so sad. But la di dee la di da life goes on. No, life does not go on. It is ridiculous. Someone needs to take a stand and get up there and do something about it. All right, moving on. Taking a look at this from Jay Wyland. He made a post about Hawaii. I'm going to read the post, and I'm going to give you a little comment about this. It says, wow, at Hawaii numbers at emergency departments, nearing 12-month peaks. At this rate, it looks 
sure to pass it up. Very different story compared to most of the continental U.S. Time and time again during this pandemic, we have seen random places throughout the world where if the conditions are correct, uh, the environment is favorable, I guess you could say, they just see an absolute all-out COVID storm. That could be what is happening in Hawaii right now. It happens in random areas. Yesterday, we noted that wastewater in San Francisco is rapidly rising. Obviously, it's not being shown in the hospitals. Whether or not there is actually a lot of severe disease going on in San Francisco, we will probably never know because hospitalization data is becoming few and far between. But in Hawaii at the moment, apparently there is still some data on going there, and the data shows there that uh, there is a large number of people that are going to the hospital or to the emergency department at the hospital right now for COVID. Let's read on. Hawaii had a relatively modest JN.1 wave around the holidays. There are likely a high number of susceptibles and the additional escape mutations from Florida KP.3 are probably also pushing on numbers quite a bit. And finally, look at this. There was just one sequence done of COVID in Hawaii. Just one. So, it's not like we have the best sequencing data in Hawaii right now. Ugh, you know, it gets me so mad that we do not sequence COVID more. We really should be. Not just in the United States, all around the world. And to see that from an area like Hawaii, it's rapidly rising there right now. CDC, alarm bells should be going off, and they should be getting more sequencing there as soon as possible. All right, national allergy map. And let's move my mouse out of the way. Take a look at that. No red anywhere today. However, we do see some orange in a lot of places. 39% of the country is in the medium at this time. So anywhere where you're in the orange, and even the yellow, make sure you're taking your allergy medicine. The southeast is not doing terrible today. Taking a look at what is going on with air quality values for today. And you're going to see in the east. And take a look. There's quite a few yellow areas. And even along I-95. Several orange areas are starting to show up. A lot of red being shown in Texas right now. Of course, red is not a good thing. That's higher levels of bad air quality. It's something that we do not want to see. Great Lakes, you're even in yellow as well. And there's just a few orange and yellow areas in California today. The most orange of California is down by Los Angeles. All right, moving on now. Heat-related illnesses. The map's starting to fill in a little more. It's going to continue. We're in June now. Uh, hot weather, it is starting to occur, and I can show you. Take a look here. There are excessive heat advisories, uh, heat warnings that are now up for many places in the southwest U.S. and Texas. It's going to get hot as well. Heat index values in any of these areas could go over 100 degrees, which, of course, obviously, that is very hot, and you need to be aware of what's going on. Check on your elderly neighbors. Uh, make sure you're staying plenty hydrated. Just take it easy. Do not overwork yourself or overexhaust yourself in the high heat. Moving on now to this. Of course, I have another place where I talk about climate. It is Climate Data Report on X. Search that in the search bar and you might be able to find that Climate Data Report. All right, moving on now. Philadelphia yesterday had a big increase in EMS calls. 830 five EMS incidents. This is not good. We're one of the busiest uh, fire departments in the country. I've been told some things lately that are like, wow, that actually happens because it's so busy. Yeah, sometimes they don't have time in between calls to actually go back to the firehouse, get a break, or, you know, even clean up from the previous call because by the time they're done one call, sometimes in some parts of Philadelphia County or the city of Philadelphia, uh, the next call, it's sitting out there, and they need to get to it as soon as possible. Yeah, it's that serious around here. Taking a look at what's going on in Montgomery County, if we can get, there we go. Montgomery County, currently, there are 13 incidents, but more importantly, I want to show you Chester County. Maybe it's changed, but when I looked a little bit ago, it was very busy. There. Okay, it's not as busy as a few minutes ago. There was actually a scroll bar here on the screen, but it is still very busy. Diabetic emergency, injured person, falls, falls, heart problems, EMS standby, heart problems, falls, respiratory difficulty, sick person, respiratory difficulty, hemorrhaging, EMS standby, heart problems, respiratory difficulty again. Before, it was over 20 calls just about 25 minutes ago. Yeah, that's, that's not good. We never want to see that. Again, it is a higher population county, but 
again, we've been running higher than it's been pre-COVID. And plus, you know, it's getting hot out now. So that does not help things either. Taking a look at Pennsylvania. Let's go a little deeper into Pennsylvania. Haven't done this in a while, but we can. We can take a look at what is going on with Pennsylvania wastewater where there is an increase. And we can see in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, there is a site that is reporting an increase. Let's uh, click on the chart if we can. We can see on the chart here, it's not a huge increase, but it is coming up on the map as increase. And there are a lot of places that do say no change. There are even some places that say decrease. Now let's go out here to Mercer County, uh, Pennsylvania, and we can see here there is a site there that is also reporting an increase at this time. And we can see here there is no change up in Monroe County. That's the Poconos, which is actually a little bit of a surprise because Memorial Day weekend was not that long ago, and the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania get absolutely packed on the summer holiday weekends. I mean, it's a big resort area. It's a big outdoors area. And maybe being outdoors, maybe that's a good thing. But we do know in crowded settings outdoors, if the conditions are right, you can catch COVID that way as well. You know, the big concert venues. Of course, it's not a big concert venue in the Poconos. I believe there is one up in Scranton area. And of course, what they do have in the Poconos, which will be coming up later on this summer, is the Pocono Raceway. So we'll be watching wastewater when that occurs. Taking a look at Walgreens for this week, we can see the positivity rate nationally is at 22.9%. That is up 4.3%. The prior week was 18.6%. Total tests, 3,512 versus 3,658. All right, we do want to go to the CDC wastewater page. We did not show Chicago over the weekend. I consider it to be important that I show Chicago. I have followers in Chicago. I have followers from all over the world that watch these videos, but I want to be loyal to Chicago. And in Cook County, we can see here that this wastewater site, 1.1 million population, the levels are stable at this time. They are not rising anymore. They were rising. Now they have leveled off. Here's another wastewater site. This one is dropping. And when we go to the other big wastewater site, all these over 1 million population, this one is dropping as well. Now let's look at two other places we have not looked at in a while. Sandoval. Wow, this is in New Mexico. Wow. It's literally going straight upward here. I was not planning on showing this site, but I clicked on it while we were, were recording here. And I'm like, oh, look at this. This just caught me off guard. So, wow. Sandoval is really that, that is rapidly rising, 101,000 population, so it's not like, oh, it only has 1,000, no, it's 101, it's one of the decent-sized wastewater sites. Maricopa County, now there's more than one Maricopa County, Arizona site. This one, which has 50,000 population, and it's starting to go upward, and it's starting to go upward rather quick. And now taking a look at some of the other Maricopa County sites, and you can see here that uh, some of them are going up, but there is one here in particular, well, actually two. One is a really big site. Here's the big one. 2.4 million population. And yeah, take a look at that. It's starting to go upward. But let's just go right next to that. Here it is. 130,000 population. Here's another one of those wastewater sites again. Boing. Yeah. Going straight upward. This is not good to see, my friends. And I am going to show you a wastewater scan site. As you can see, here's National Wastewater Scan. And that is rising as well. But I'm going to show you a site... It's Dover, New Hampshire. I tweeted about this last night. And again, we're just randomly seeing these areas. Here it is, Dover, New Hampshire. Take a look at the chart here. We'll actually uh, zoom this in. No, we don't want to view charts like that. And take a look at this. It is literally going vertical, almost straight upward now. And this site, it, you know, it hasn't updated too many times. So I would like to see what happens on the future updates to see if maybe there will be a correction at some point. And let's check the other viruses. Well, influenza is not rising. RSV, we wouldn't expect to see a rise with that. HMPV is dropping. And some of these other viruses, what are they doing at this time? Okay, here's another one that's uh, rising. But again, it's not like San Francisco. Some of the other wastewater detections, you know, like influenza, HMPV, other things, are they also are seeing rise? No, this is standalone COVID. COVID is rapidly going up there. So we're continuing to see this at wastewater sites. Taking a look now at what is going on on with uh, Canada. 15 sites are showing an increase, 33 have no change, 14 are decreasing. Three sites now are in the high category. That is new. It was, I believe, just one or zero the other day. Uh, moderate now at three, low is at 17, new sites is at 39, and I should 
tell you. I've been seeing a lot of people mentioning this on Twitter. Couldn't find an actual news article for it, but a lot of people are saying Ontario is going to be cutting funding for COVID in wastewater, or wastewater in general. A terrible idea. Wastewater is a great way to detect what is going on in the local community with these viruses. Just totally ridiculous that they are going to do that. All right, we don't want to jump to New York yet. New Jersey, 69 out of 70 hospitals reporting, 189 hospitalizations, 8 people on a ventilator in the ICU, 18 discharges, just 7. So hospitalizations, they're higher today because more hospitals are reporting, and it does look like, with these corrected numbers, it does look like uh, they probably did have a little bit of a jump up. Maybe it had dropped a little bit over the weekend. And now it went back up once again. Taking a look at New York State now, 491 cases, just ever so slightly higher than last week at this time. New York State is not seeing a major increase. They're just seeing a gradual increase at this time. And we can see that here on hospital admissions. We take a look at that. They had 218 hospital admissions today. Last week they started the week 277. Why so high? It was a holiday weekend. So we X that out and go to the previous week. We can see here, well, the week before that, on the 20th, they had 211. So it's only seven higher than what they started a week off two weeks ago. So again, they're not seeing a upward rapid increase. They're seeing just a gradual increase. And when we take a look at the hospitalizations, I know this is going to refresh, but here we are right here. Hospitalizations are higher. 538 versus uh, yesterday's number of 506. At one point last week, they hit 524. So again, a gradual increase, and the number of people in the ICU is at 43 at this time. All right, finally, taking a look at Colorado. Colorado, again, just a gradual increase for hospitalizations. They now report that it's 88 people in the hospital. I think we're going to see this number update again tomorrow. Let me refresh this just to be sure that it did not update on us this afternoon. Now, I think what we're going to see is maybe it'll update again tomorrow. I don't know. I thought it was saying here data as of uh, June 1st. Anyhow, that's uh, where Colorado is at right now. 88 people in the hospital. 0.4% of emergency department visits are diagnosed with COVID. And the positivity rate, that is starting to go up. 5.4%, that is up by 1.2%. Cases, they're also up. We know they lag. We know hospitalizations lag cases, so hospitalizations will see a bit more of an increase. Cases reported this week, 751. That is up by 104. Hey, look at that. We've gone over time for this video today. I hope you learned something today. We saw a few more wastewater sites that are rapidly starting to go up. I will keep my eyes out if I see any more during my, you know, wandering around here on the Internet. Uh, of course, I will let you know about it tomorrow hopefully we'll get some more international data i believe on thursday we're going to get the uk so we'll see what happens with that if you learned anything subscribe down below want to see more videos like this of course subscribe like this content give it a thumbs up share these videos with anyone you know leave a comment down below as well hit that notification bell so you know when i do my daily update and that's it. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.